This video is part 4-6 on our Introduction to Programming series. In this video, we look at Boolean, Arithmetic and Comparison Operators. So before we dive in, let's just think about what the Arithmetic Logic Unit performs. It performs Arithmetic Operation, it performs Logical Comparison and it also performs Binary Shifts. And because of this, obviously, there's a number of things you expect it to be able to do. You expect it to be able to perform addition and subtraction. You expect it to be able to compare if one item is greater than or less than the other. And these type of actions performed by the ALU are supported by operators that you can use in all common programming languages. Let's take a look at some of them now. So we'll start with the common arithmetic operators. Well, there's one you'll be very familiar with from maths. There's the plus symbol, for example, x equals 7 plus 2. So that's addition. There's the minus or subtraction operator, x equals 7 minus 2. There's the multiplication operator. Now notice here we use the star or asterisk symbol and not the letter x on the keyboard. So x equals 7 times 2. And of course, to round off, there's the division symbol. So, for example, x equals 7 divided by 2, 3.5. We then have um, explanation. So, uh, x equals 7 to the power of 2. So, that would be 49. We then have modulus. Now, this one is one which candidates are often unaware of. So when you're seeing it in the exam, when you write it in the exam, we'd use the word mod. Different languages sometimes use different symbols. So mod performs a modulus. It means how many whole numbers are left over once you fit the number on the right into the number on the left as many times as you can. So if we've got x equals 7 mod 2, how many whole times can we fit the number on the right, 2, into the number on the left? We can see here I can fit it in three whole times. What's left over is 1. So that's what modulus returns. It returns 1. It returns what's left over. In conjunction with modulus is what's called integer division. And in your exam, you'll see it as the div command, although it's shown differently in other languages. This is how many whole times does the number on the right fit into the number on the left. So as we can see from the previous example, the number on the right, 2, fits three whole times into the number on the left. So 7 div 2 is 3. Now that's important. Integer division is very different from normal division. With normal division, 7 divided by 2 is 3 and a half. With integer division, so using whole numbers, 7 div 2 is 3. There are also common comparison operators. So we have equals. So is one number equal to another number? Is this value equal to this value? And you'll notice in your exams and in most programming languages, the equals operator is a double equals, and that's because the single equals is typically used for assignment. The opposite to that is not equals to. So is the value on the left not equal to the value on the right? Now, there are certainly different ways of showing this in programming languages. For your exam, not equals to is an explanation mark followed by an equals. We then have the less than symbol, and you'll be used to this from maths. And we have the less than or equal symbol. On the flip side, we have the greater than symbol. And we have the greater than or equal symbol. Candidates also can trip up here in exams when what they mean to use is greater than or equals to, but they accidentally forget and just use greater to. So just be careful here that you're using exactly the correct comparison operator when you're constructing statements. So there are three Boolean operators you need to be aware of and how you can use them in programming. And the first is not. So using our little analogy on the right, you can think of that as use an umbrella if it's raining, but not 
hold. A couple of typical ways you could use this, you could say end of file equals false. So that's setting a, a Boolean flag to false. And then you can say while not end of file, while not false. And this is the same as saying while end of file equals false. The next Boolean operator is and. So in our example, wear a coat if it's raining and it's cold, only if both conditions is true. So you can see here we've got end of file and we've set that to false and we've got another Boolean variable called found and we we'll set that to false. We're saying while we're not at the end of file and not found, so not is equal to false, then carry out a statement. Both parts have to be true for the whole thing to be true. And the final Boolean operator is or. So with our analogy, catch a bus if it's raining or cold. And here's a couple of examples. You could use it in an if statement. So for example, if x equals two or x equals four, then run the code for the if statement. Or you could use it in the checking clause of a while loop. While choice is less than one or choice is greater than three. Only one of those conditions has to be true and the while loop would execute. You can also use this concept to create an infinite loop. So you could simply say while true. Boolean operators, as you can see, are used in what we call Boolean expressions. And we see these in if loops and while loops and do until loops. So if a Boolean expression is true, then run some code. While this Boolean expression is true, run some code. Do the following code until this Boolean expression is true. And it's called a Boolean expression because that expression equates or evaluates to either true or false. And also in them, we can use the Boolean operators. So if this and this or this, but not that. And we combine them in a wide variety of ways. OK, so now you have an overview of the various operators you need to know about. Let's actually have a look at them being used in practice in Python. So let's start with arithmetic operators and first of all division. So if I do print six divided by three, I get 2.0. Six multiplied by two obviously gives me 12. Two to the exponent of four gives me 16. 3 plus 3 obviously gives me 6. 10 minus 5 prints 5. Now, integer division, remember, says how many times does the number on the right fit into the number of the left whole times? So 2 fits into 7, 3 whole times. So 7 slash slash 2 gives me 3. In Python, 7% 2, percent is for modulus, says how many times does the number in the right fit into the number on the left, then what's left over? So two fits into seven three times, and what we have left over is one. So 7% two returns one. And of course, there's nothing stopping you combining different operators and indeed enclosing various sections in brackets, just as you would in maths, to make bigger compound expressions. So here you can see I have nine divided by three on the left, so that'd be three times by one plus two. Well, that's three. So I've got three times three, which is nine. And then we're saying nine modulus three. So in other words, how many whole times does three fit into nine? Well, it's three. And what's left over? Well, what's left over is zero. So the result of this whole expression is zero. We also have comparison operators. So let's have a quick run through those. For this to work, I've set three variables, A, B, and C, and you can see that on the table on the right. A is five, B is five, and C is 10. So A equals B, well, that would be true, because A and B are both five. A equals C is false. Likewise, if I say A is not equal to B, well, that is false, because A and B are equal. 
But if I say A is not equal to C, well, that is true because A is not equal to C. They hold different values. Just as with maths, we have B is greater than A, that's false, whereas C is greater than A is true. Where B is greater than or equal to A, well, that is now true because they are equal. And C, obviously, at the same time, is still greater than or equal to A, so that's true. B is less than A, well, that's false, they're the same. B is less than C, well, that's true. Whereas B is less than or equal to A, well, that's definitely true because they're both five, so they are equal. And still, B is less than or equal to C is still true. And finally, Boolean operators. So we're actually here going to show how we're going to combine some comparison operators and Boolean operators. So I've still got A equaling 5, B equaling 5 and C equaling 10. So I'm going to say A is equal to B. Well, that part is true because A and B are both 5 and C is greater than B. Well, C is 10 and B is 5. So that's also true. So I've got true and true. And when we use the Boolean operator and both parts, the part on the left and the right have to be true. So this statement prints true. The next one, A equals B is true and C is less than A. Well, C is not less than A, so that right hand part is false. So I've got true and false. Well, we can't have that of an and statement. True and false is false. And that's what appears on the screen. So now let's have a look at an or statement. Now with an or statement, we only require either the left hand or the right hand side to be true for the whole thing to be true. So on the left, we've got A is less than C. Well, that is true. Or C is less than B. Well, C is not less than B. C is greater. So that right hand bit is false. So we've ended up with true or false. Well, that's OK, because at least one of them was true. So the output's true. The next one, A is not equal to B. Well, A is equal to B, so that's false. Or C is less than B. Well, C is not less than B, so that's false. So now we've got false or false. Well, in that situation, the output's false. And then finally, we have the not Boolean operation, which simply reverses the state. So we've got A equals B. Well, A does equal B. They're both five, so that's true. So then we have not true, which flips true to false. And then finally, we're combining things here. So we've got A equals B. Well, that's true. And C is greater than B. Well, that's true. So we've got true and true. So that whole right hand section is true. But then in the outer brackets, we not it, which flips it to false. Now, just before we wrap up this video, a lot of the examples we've been giving you in Python, but you could well be programming Visual Basic, C Sharp, Java or any one of a number of other languages. Now, whereas the addition operator is exactly the same in virtually all languages, other operators differ. You can see here, for example, uh, that the symbol for div can be represented one of four different ways. What's important here is you understand the one that you're aware of your programming language, and also you have some familiarity with the symbols or terms which OCR will use when representing questions in the exam. And that's shown there in the first column. So having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What are the common arithmetic, comparison, and Boolean operators used in procedural programming? We're just going to go over a quick note now about the language guide that's used in your external assessments. So remember, the exam board don't know what language you've been learning to program, so exam questions might use an unfamiliar syntax. Towards the back of the specification for both AS and A level, you'll find Appendix 5D, where the exam board state the following guide shows the format pseudocode will appear in the examined components is provided to allow you to give learners familiarity before the exam. Learners are not expected to memorize the syntax of the pseudocode and when asked 
may provide answers in any style of pseudocode they choose, providing its meaning could be reasonably inferred by a competent programmer. So although you don't have to answer in the specific syntax shown in the exam papers, so you are familiar and not thrown in the exam, it's worth downloading a copy of the specification and printing out the appendix. If your school is a Craig and Day subscriber, then ask your teacher for a copy of our student learning and exam support guide. This provides all the information you need in a set of handy reference sheets.